Hello, I'm sorry for the bad lighting and if you can hear my car running, it is running. Um, I am in my garage <laughs> about to go to work, but I wanted to update this vlog and start it. So hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Mary and today's video is going to be a dystopian reading vlog. I decided I wanted to do this because there's a couple of books coming out or that came out, excuse me, recently, like in the last couple of years that are dystopians. That dystopian used to be like my favorite genre um, or like one of them. And I am just really interested in the shift to adult dystopian that's been coming out. And again, I saw like three or four books that really caught my eye for this vlog. So of course, one is gonna be Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel, which I own and put on my TBR this month. So I will be reading that for this vlog. I'm also planning on reading Chain Gang All Stars. I can't remember the author's name. I'll pop a picture right here. I may or may not get to this one because there's not an audiobook and the ebook. I'm still like waiting on a hold to come in and I don't know how many people are in front of me so I should check on that but that is part of the plan. Um, I'm also planning on reading Light Pirate. Again I don't know who wrote that Lucy something I think but I'll pop it right here so you can see it. And finally I am currently reading The School for Good Mothers by Jessamine Chan which was also on my TBR. I got an audiobook of that. I started reading it yesterday. I'm updating this vlog in this weird spot because I've been reading um, a lot via audiobook especially recently and because of that, I've not been updating my vlogs with like halfway point checkups uh, or check-ins. I've just been like basically starting and finishing a book and then being like, oh yeah, by the way, I read this, which is just not the point of a vlog to me. So I am reading that. I'm not very far in. I only started listening to it yesterday while I was like um, doing dishes after work. I did a couple of chores. And so I think I listened to maybe like 45 minutes of the audiobook. I did not listen for very long, uh, but I wanted to give you a rundown of what it's about. So it's about this woman named Frida and Frida has a baby with her ex, Gust, I think is his name. Um, it sounds like they're saying Gust, like a gust of wind. But again, I'm listening to it, not reading it physically. So I don't know if it's just Gus. I'm not really sure. But he, I think, cheated on her while she was pregnant or something. But he left her when the baby was only like a month or so old or like three months old. It was a very young baby and is now with this other girl, Suzanne, that he left her for. And Suzanne is a white woman. Uh, Frida is Chinese and so her baby is half Chinese and half white obviously because Gus is white. So um, the premise of the book is at the beginning of the book she gets a call from the police saying like you have to come down to the station we have your kid and apparently she it sounds like honestly she has like postpartum depression like PPD. Um, the baby is eight months old or no the baby is two years old now um, and she left it home alone for like a couple hours while she went to work which I don't know so the premise of this book I think is that she's gonna have to go to like a corrective institution to get custody of her kid back and it's supposed to be like a dystopian society that like puts too much pressure on motherhood but here's my I guess issue with it just straight off the bat is like people who leave their kids their toddlers home by themselves do just like should not have custody of those kids like they've got to get whatever's going on in their life and you can say that like Oh, it was just a mistake or whatever but like that kid could have died very easily so i don't really have a lot of sympathy for the main character right now i don't know if i'm supposed to but like i'm kind of with the the cop i never thought i'd say it i'm with the police on this one i don't think she should have custody of this kid but we'll keep going i'll let you know how it goes as we get more into it i'll keep you updated of my progress I don't know if you can see him, but if you can, that's hilarious. Look. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what I've been reading. I finished The School for Good Mothers, and I wanted to let you know what I thought was the, like, dystopian part of that book. So, I think where I left off, I was telling you, like, that she basically had her child taken out of her custody. and was The child was given to, like the dad and the stepmom or like the dad's girlfriend they were going to take care of it Susanna but what the school for good mothers is is like a year-long program that women who have their children taken away from them have to go do where they basically get given this very lifelike doll that is essentially the same like age as their child but they are responsible for like caring for this doll but as you can imagine there's a lot of like discussion on how the system treats women of color versus white women um and also how the system treats like women who get their kids taken away from them versus men who get their kids 
taken away from them. Basically saying that like men who get their kids taken away, first of all, it's much more likely for a woman to get her kids taken away uh, because men, I mean, it's just not as likely that they would go to a program like this. And um, I don't know, it has a very interesting like discussion of it. Also some of the moms, like in this future world, if you spank your kids, your kids get taken away. Um, and so there's a lot of like discussion on like how you have to be the perfect mom. I'm going to reiterate that I don't care about like perfection for moms because like that's not attainable. But like I think most people should know that you cannot leave a toddler. I think her kid is 18 months old or whatever it was. You can't leave a toddler home alone. You just can't. So I don't know. I think it makes sense that she got her kid taken away from her because her kid could have died uh but all of that said the other main thing is that Frida the main character is Chinese and so she has a, a daughter with a white man so her kid is half Chinese and she's really concerned that her child is going to be or is going to feel like she doesn't belong with her like all white family because her dad is now dating a white woman named Susanna um and she's like Frida the mom is very concerned that Harriet which is the toddler will just not have like an attachment to her Chinese self. Like she won't identify as being Chinese. And that's a big thing that happens in this book. Also, I do think it's fucked up that like, so part of what you have to do when you're an attorney, which I'm an attorney, if you don't know, um, is you get pro bono cases assigned to you, which is basically like court appointed cases that you do for free. Um, so the court basically says like, hey, you have to represent, sometimes it's kids and we're guardian ad litem for children. So a lot of times though, it's like parents trying to get their kids back. So that's most of my, that's all of my cases actually um, that I've been given so far, but it is a really long process. Um, and sometimes like for no reason, the parent will just not have contact with their kid for like weeks or months. And you, they just, they like don't have, like they haven't been told they can't have it, but they just don't have it. Um, because the person who's in charge of setting that up either can't be bothered or is overworked or X, Y, Z number of things. Um, but this book talks about that, but like, it's a punishment for the parents that they don't get contact with their kids. And then because they haven't had contact with their kids, the next time they talk to their kids, especially like Frida and Harriet, Harriet's a toddler. And so she doesn't have the best like recall or memory. Um, and, and she's also doesn't understand what's happening because no one is explaining it to her. So she'll see her mom and then be like really upset that her mom is there. Cause she's like, no, you don't, you're not supposed to be here or she won't see her mom. And then she'll be really upset that her mom is not there. Um, and both of those things get discount, like counted like, as points against Frida. And so it's just, it was very frustrating to read. I think I ended up giving this book four stars. Um, this has been a really long winded example or like discussion of this book, but I really liked it, but also like I would. I, I don't know. I like, I struggled reading it because of how frustrating it was for me. And also I feel like there were some pacing issues. So like, because she's at this school thing for a year, um, sometimes the same things happen. Um, I feel like parts of it could have been like expanded upon more and parts of it probably could have been cut shorter. So that's my thought on basically all of that. Um, but I also started The Light Pirate yesterday I had to go to Costco to get my tire replaced because I got a flat tire the other day I don't know if I mentioned that um but I went to Costco and got a new tire on um and while I was waiting I decided to read some of the light pirates I had it as an ebook and I'm probably about a third of the way into this one maybe not even but it's about this woman whose name is also Frida which I thought was very interesting and she kind of had like a short relationship with this man named Kirby um, and he does like hurricane disaster relief and Frida's mom, Frida grew up basically with her mom, always like sailing around different islands and they were never anywhere for long, but she was visiting her mom on the coast of San Juan when a hurricane hit and her mom died in the hurricane, but Kirby was there for like disaster relief stuff and they hooked up and then she got pregnant. And so, um, Kirby was like, well, tell you what, you marry me, come back to live with me in Florida. That'll be that. And this all happens before the book starts. So you're just like finding out about this throughout the first couple of chapters. But Frida is like hugely pregnant now and there's another hurricane coming and she's very afraid of hurricanes because her mother died in a hurricane um, just recently, like within nine months because that's when she met, what's his name, Kirby. Um, and he has two kids from a previous relationship that he was already divorced from before he met Frida, just to get that out of the way. But 
Um, this book just basically chronicles like them in this hurricane and like throughout the years. I know already from the Goodreads description that she's going to give birth to this baby and the baby is going to be named Wanda. And then Wanda is also going to be a hurricane later. And I'm not sure what the dystopian element of this is, except for from what I gather, it's in the future. And hurricanes just happen a lot more often. So I don't know if it's supposed to be like a climate change type thing or what, but I will let you know as I find out more about that. But yes, um, that is it. This is my 12 minute update. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I will catch you again very soon, hopefully. Marvel, are you tired? Look at them, not don't look at me, look at them. Look, look over there. Oh my gosh. Oh. Hello, while I'm sitting here, I thought I would just update this vlog really quick. Um, so I am like an hour out from being finished with The Light Pirate. Uh, I will probably finish it this morning because I have a few other things to do and I listen to my audiobooks faster than two times speed. So I should finish it in like 20 minutes. Um, yeah, I don't know if I like it. <laughs> so as I mentioned, it's about this girl. It's primarily about Wanda. So I said it was about Frida. Frida is really only in the beginning. She dies in childbirth. Uh, spoiler, that happens at the very beginning of the book, though. Um, so it's basically about Wanda's life uh, growing up in this really tumultuous climate. So uh, Florida kind of falls off the map and everyone has to evacuate, but she just doesn't. Um, she stays for various reasons that you find out as you read the book. And she's like very connected with the world. She also has this like weird thing where if she touches water, it becomes bioluminescent. Um, not explained. We don't know why that's happened. Uh, and with less than an hour left of the audiobook, I'm wondering if I'm going to get an explanation. But it's about her different relationships with varying people. Um, like people that mean a lot to her and how she's just kind of like a strange child. She, specifically, it's about her relationship with her brother, her dad, um, like this neighbor lady. Uh, there's a lot of like really interesting stuff happening in this book. But I just like overall am not that into it, I guess. Um... I just feel like there's it's leaving something to be desired and I'm not sure I'm not sure exactly what that is but again I will keep you apprised of my progress I will finish this hopefully today and then I'll be able to start station 11 by Emily St. John Mandel there's still no update on me getting chain gang all stars so unfortunately I don't think I'm going to be able to read that for this vlog because once I finish station 11 I would like to be able to sort of cut this off um but you never know I might come back like three weeks from now and have Chain Gang All-Stars and be like, I got this book and we're going to do it. Oh, sorry. I bumped my sand. Anyways, I just filmed my TBR for um, August. I'm doing a Rillium again and I'm very excited. So uh, I don't know if you'll see that before you see this. Surely not. This will probably go up sometime in August. But anyways, that is the update. Um, I'm going to finish that book now and I will let you know how I feel about it when I'm done. Hello, it is now Monday evening. I am home from work and I just wanted to let you know that I finished The Light Pirate and honestly, I think it's a skip. It just didn't really work for me. So I really liked the, the like concept of the world's, the like post-apocalyptic world that's brought on by like climate change. I think that's a really interesting concept. Sorry if you can hear the thunder. My dog is probably freaking out um, because it is starting to storm here again. We've been having the craziest weather recently recently but um back to the light pirate i really like the idea that like it's flooding um half of florida is falling into the ocean hurricane season is year round and like all these crazy like natural disaster type things are happening and i also really liked the concept of it following one girl who was born during a hurricane through like four seasons of her life which is kind of what the book tries to do however the pacing just didn't work for me and it felt like every time I started to get into one of the time periods that they were in in uh, Wanda's life as soon as I was starting to like get a feel for it and a rhythm for it it would skip forward in time again and for me that just didn't really work also it started going out of order towards the end where it would it was in a like future timeline for Wanda but she kept flashing back to the years that you missed from when she was a child to basically when she's like an adult um I don't know exactly how old she is, but I assume she's like 25, 30 at least um, in this like third timeline. In the second timeline, she's like 10. That one was really interesting. But then as soon as I started getting like really invested in that one, we skipped forward. And of course, once we skipped forward, I like, I don't know. I started to lose 
not lose my investment in it, but like it just got to the point where I just didn't care enough. And it just was Wanda in this future timeline. And she kept flashing back to what had happened previously, like how she got there. But I would have just rather had the linear story, to be honest with you. I feel like it would have been more impactful for me. So ultimately, this book was a miss for me. I gave it three stars. Realistically, it's like a two and a half. Um, I think it was well written. I would read other books by this author. I just feel like this one just wasn't for me. It just didn't work for me the way it was set out. Um, and so I have one more book to read for this vlog. Well, technically two if I get Chang Gang All Stars. I will read that as well. But I have Station Eleven. I haven't started it yet, but I'm hoping to. And I'll let you know when I have updates. Hello. Um, I almost said welcome or welcome back, but um, you've been watching this vlog for a while, I hope. So I finished Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. And I truly at this point cannot remember if I've already done a clip talking about my thoughts on this book because I remember a different points thinking I should do a clip talking about this book but I'm pretty sure I just listened to it in my drive I went to Kentucky this past weekend to celebrate a very good friend of mine she's ha she had her bridal shower and she lives in Louisville now so I was down there um or over there I could be farther north than here I'm really not sure but all of that to say I drove for about seven and a half hours each way and I finished station I started and finished station 11 during that drive so I wanted to talk to you about it because I do have some thoughts. Station Eleven is a dystopian book that came out, I think, in 2014. And it basically follows this woman, primarily her name is Kirsten, I think. And it is about 20 years after basically an apocalypse has happened. So there was this flu-like disease and 99.99% .99 of the human population got it. And this book just follows 20 years after this has happened and like society has pretty much ceased to exist the way we know it now and how people are surviving. So Kirsten is a part of this traveling troupe that does, they have an orchestra or a symphony, I think is what it's called. So like musicians and then also they perform Shakespeare plays for people and they travel around to these known towns and the kickstart sort of of this book is they go to this town that they went to last two years ago and when they went before they had to leave a couple there who was part of their traveling symphony because the woman in the couple was very pregnant and it was safer for her to stay in this town and give birth in like a home stable environment type thing i think they were living in a gas station or no a wendy's it was a wendy's um but it was safer to do that than it would have been if they had been traveling on the road and just had a baby in the wilderness, basically. So they go back to this town two years later and the town is called Deborah on the Water and it is entirely different. And there's basically like a cult-like presence in this town. So the book sort of follows a bunch of different points of view. It even goes back to follow some points of view from before the fall. I'm calling it the fall, but I don't think it's ever actually called the fall in the book, but before this flu happened and what, in those sequences that are before the flu happened, it's following a particular man named Arthur Leander, I think, who is an, a Canadian actor. And you find out sort of why he's important as the book goes along. I love this book. I gave it five stars. I really like, my biggest nitpicky thing about it is that I kept expecting to feel this like emotional pull that I never at any point felt. I never felt like crying. I never, yeah, that's mostly it. I never felt like crying in this book. Because I never felt like crying in this book, I was unsure if I should be giving it five stars. But ultimately, I do think it was a five star read. The way that the story was told was like very unpredictable for me. Like I could not foresee certain things that happened. I really liked all of the character connections that were made. I also didn't find that I wanted one perspective more than any of the others. I really enjoyed all of the different perspectives that I got to read from and I just really think it was a very well done book. So if you have not read this book yet, I feel like I'm the last person alive to read it, but if you like me did not read it 10 years ago when it came out, I think you should read it. It was really, really good. And I believe there's The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel and then Sea of Tranquility are like in this same vein. I don't know exactly what they're about, but I was told when I bought Glass Hotel that I should wait to read that until after I had read Station Eleven because they kind of are a series of sorts. I don't know exactly what that means, but I am looking forward to reading the other books in her series of sorts. That being said, I actually did get a copy of Chain Gang All-Stars. So this is not the end of the vlog. I have to read that. It is an ebook 
copy. I don't know if there is an audiobook or if there's just an ebook, but I've started reading it and I'm absolutely loving it. Like it's really, really good so far. But I'm not that far into it. I'm less than 100 pages in at this point, which is, I don't know, a quarter, maybe not even. Um, but it basically follows, okay, I don't know if I can tell you even what it follows. Let me start with the premise. The premise of this book is it's in a dystopian future and the prison system has evolved in the United States to include what is basically like a gladiator style fight club um, that is sponsored by the state. And essentially the premise is if you want to, you can volunteer if you are a prisoner and you can volunteer to join this fight club thing where you basically fight to the death every month, every week. I'm not sure exactly how often, um, but you can fight to the death and you have to do it for three years. And at the end of those three years, you get released. So far, no one has survived the three years. So we open up with what, who I believe is going to be our main character whose name I can't remember, which is kind of upsetting. Thurwar? Her last name is Thurwar. I, I can't remember her first name. But we open up on her first fight that she wins, obviously, because she's the main character. And um, she's actually fighting someone who would have been their last fight if they survived. But they didn't. So that's the book, basically. And it's about these people who are primarily black and a lot of them are women. The main people we follow in the story are black women, but there are obviously other people besides just the black women. But I think this is supposed to be a commentary on the way that society views black people in general and also black women, uh, because the these women are very highly sexualized and they are like seen as like badass, brilliant, beautiful, um, like sexy women uh, when they kill people, which is really intense. It also is kind of a commentary on like the state run executions. Like, I don't know how other countries do this. In the United States, depending on what state you live in, it is still legal for state sanctioned uh, murder <laughs> or the death penalty. Like you can still be killed by the state uh, in a lot of states. I actually don't know about the state that I live in right now, but I know in Arkansas, you can, Texas, you can. Uh, I think Utah, you can, um, a lot of states still have the death penalty. It's like a state by state thing. Um, and this book I think is basically saying like, I, I feel like this is too obvious to be something that gets like uncovered later. Cause I don't really know where the book is going outside of like the general premise of the book, which is what I just told you. I know that this book is kind of exploring the idea that like, the state doesn't have to execute these people because they will do it themselves. Um, there has also been a guy, <laughs> I should clarify more. Um, the reason it's called Chain Gang All-Stars. That's the name of the like program, but you get a chain, a chain gang, um, and you're each a link in a chain. So I don't know exactly how many there are. I think there are seven or eight, but you don't get pinned, pitted against your own chain. I have some, some theories and some suspicions about what is going to happen in this book, but I don't want to voice them in case you read this and you're not thinking them and then they happen. So, um, but I am really enjoying it. I think it's really well written and it's just a very compelling concept. And also the way that it's told is from different perspectives, kind of like how I was talking about Station Eleven has a bunch of different perspectives. This has perspectives of the different links in the chain. There's very clearly a main character, but we also get her love interest's perspective, and we get the perspective of the guy who is the announcer for this show, and we also get the perspective of a guy who is just there to watch um, and is there as a spectator. And it's just, it's really, really interesting so far. So I will keep you apprised of my progress with that, but I think that is going to be the last thing I read for this vlog. So hopefully the next clip you see is me wrapping up my thoughts on that book and uh and then we can sign this thing off but um I'm, I'm really enjoying it so far hello hello i just wanted to briefly update you <laughs> marvel is napping over there on the dog bed and when i said hello he like popped up um that was very very funny i just wanted to let you know that i am reading changing all stars still um i'm about 70 percent of the way through now and i think part of the problem with this book is that 
I am enjoying it for the record. Um, it is very violent, which is making it kind of hard for me to like stick with. Um, if that makes sense, like I can't read a lot of it at once, but I do at this point have to finish it because my library has like five other people waiting in line for it. And I think my hold expires tomorrow. So I need to get that read tonight, hopefully. Um, but the other thing I was going to say is I don't really know what the overall like plot is. This book almost feels like someone had a premise and then they were like, we're going to put some characters in this premise. And that has been the book so far. And I feel like with a book like this, I need there to be more of a plot than there is, if that makes sense. So I will finish it and then come back and let you know more in depth. But I just wanted to say that now that I've gotten to the 70% mark and it's like building to a big like battleground battle type thing that these people do. I think I've already explained the premise of this book, so I won't do that again. But the prem the book basically is the premise and then there's characters that are put in that premise and the characters aren't like poorly developed. I wouldn't say like they're not the best developed characters I've ever read, but like I get it. Um, the other problem that I'm having is this book has footnotes, which is really interesting and it at times can be helpful because like there are things that are made up for this world. Like there's new technology that we don't know about. Um, the, there's also like different things that exist in this world that don't exist in our world. And there's footnotes that explain who people are, um, why they were in prison and also like why the games, like what, who, the history of this like sports game thing um, is in footnotes, which is helpful again to read it because it almost reads more like a history book, if that makes sense, which is fun for the parts that are made up. But there are also footnotes that are like talking about things that exist currently. And it's like, I'm having a hard time with those because I've mentioned this before. I'm okay with authors having like an agenda, right? Like everybody has a bias or whatever, but I don't want to be force fed an agenda, even if it's an agenda that I agree with. Even if it's an opinion that I agree with, politically, socially, ethically, whatever, I don't like being forced on that kind of thing. So like it immediately, I'm just a very contrarian person, I think. So immediately being told I should think something or like being hit over the head with an idea just turns me off completely. And I think sometimes this book is doing that. Um, I'd be interested to hear other people's opinions on it because they are like facts that are sprinkled in in the footnotes um like there are facts about the number of sexual assaults that occur in prisons facts about the average lifespan of a person in prison facts about like I'm sure everybody at this point knows I think it's 40 percent of police officers are involved in domestic violence disputes um this book talks about that a little bit and there's also like supposed to be a law that if you are convicted of domestic violence, you can't own guns. But if you're in the armed forces, whether that be the military or if you're in the police um, or a police officer or whatever, what have you, it doesn't apply to you, um, which is problematic for a lot of reasons. But anyways, that's in the book. But like, I don't know. I, I think I just want things messaging to be subtler. I think that's what I'm getting at. This book is not very subtle. Um, so I'm I'm still enjoying my read of it, but my enjoyment is like kind of tapering off, which is unfortunate um, for all of those reasons. But I will come back when I have finished it and give you a final update and then rehash this vlog. So stay tuned. Hello. <laughs> I am just now editing this vlog. I haven't posted in a while. Today is like September 19th or something. I filmed this vlog in July. So there's that. Um, I finished it in August. I ended up using my audiobook credit to finish Changing All Stars. And I think I ended up giving it like two stars. Um, I really dislike the ending. And there's a couple of reasons why. Um, one is... How do I say this? So the way that the characters are written is we follow this one chain gang primarily. We also get some perspectives of other characters who come into play for like the big climactic scene. But I felt like 
that scene ended up being very anticlimactic because I had no real emotional draw to those characters. So I was not like emotionally impacted by what was happening with them. I sort of had a suspicion about what would happen. Um, and so the stakes just were like artificially raised. And for me, I didn't feel them. I hope that makes sense. Um, I stay with what I was saying in the previous clip. I did want to just clarify when I'm talking about my issue with the footnotes that have like actual facts in them. Part of it is that I don't like, <laughs> like I am very contrarian. But the other part is I really dislike being taken out of the story in that way. Because like, if this is a dystopian future, this is supposed to be like 100 years in the future, or 50 years in the future, whatever it is, probably like 100 years because the games start about like 20 to 30 years in the future and the games have been going on for a long time at this point those facts and figures will have altered and changed. So to have so many of them be set in like our current present day just didn't feel like I get what the author was trying to do, um, which is educate. And I do think that's important. I just feel like I didn't love it as an aspect of this book. If that makes sense, I hope it does. So to recap this vlog, which I just was editing it. So <laughs> I'm trying to sort of recap it. Um, I read The Light Pirate by Lily Brooks Dalton and I think gave it three stars. Um, I read The School for Good Mothers and I think I gave that four stars. Um, I read the Emily St. John Mandel book that I'm now blanking on the name of, Station Eleven, and I gave that five stars, really loved it. And I read Chain Gang All Stars, which I gave two stars. So <laughs> the whole like spectrum of emotions. Also, I will say I would read more by both Lily Brooks Dalton and I can't remember the name of the author of Changing All Stars, but I liked the writing in both of those. Like I feel like they were very well written and I honestly really like if I had to guess what my rating would have been for Changing All Stars after reading the first couple of chapters, I would have said five stars because they were so, it was so explosively written and just so like powerful and impactful straight from the jump but it just like tapered off at that point and then my enjoyment went from being like shoom plateau to like falling extremely um I almost didn't finish it like I thought about DNFing it with like four percent left because I was pretty sure I knew what was gonna happen but um anyways all of that to say I did finish this vlog successfully a month and a half ago uh, but here I am just now um making this video for you. So uh, if you enjoyed this vlog, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you made it to this point in the video, leave me, I don't know, uh, some yellow emoji. Chang Gang All Stars has a yellow cover, so leave me a yellow emoji. Um, let me know, as always, if you read any of these books and how you felt about them. Also let me know uh, how your reading has been going, because my reading has been fine. I just have not been making videos. So um, hopefully I will see you in another video very soon. Uh, and... Yeah, let's just see where this goes. <laughs>